Hello and welcome to the latest Total War Warhammer 2 campaign walkthrough. Today we're playing as the Lizabeth faction of Hexoartal led by the ancient slan mage priest Mazda Mundi. We're 79 turns into this campaign and as you can see from the overview map we've been steadily expanding throughout Lustria. Using the overlays you can see we've got a great relationship with our neighbours Zlan Huapek and we are in reasonable stead with Teclis and his elven order of lawmasters. Though the public order overlay here shows we've got some issues to keep an eye on in our newly annexed territory north and south. Down to ground level and we can see Mazda Mundi himself mounted on his faithful Stegadon steed Zlak, standing guards at the gates to his capital city. At level 26 he's pretty well equipped already and has earned a number of bonus effects through the new trait system, which now enables lords to level up in a variety of different areas as they successfully or unsuccessfully engage in certain actions. Looking at Mazda Mundi's skills panel, we can also see he's a powerful spellcaster with a selection of some of the more useful and powerful spells from multiple different laws. Further improving his magical abilities is this unique skill chain which enables him to better harness the winds of magic and culminates in two powerful bound spells, Focus of Mysteries and the devastating triple wind spell Ruination of Cities, which we will unlock now. A feature unique to the Lizardmen is their ability to tap the Geomantic Web, an ancient nexus of mystical power lines. Settlements can be upgraded to take advantage of this and power up their provincial commandments. You can see that all settlements are connected on the web, which is colour-coded to denote the strength of their connection. Hovering over the active provincial commandment, we can see this province is working at strength level 3, giving us a commensurate suite of bonuses to our current commandment or any others that we choose to enact. Now this geomantic strength is dictated by two things, the geomantic pylon building chain level, and the fact that an adjacent settlement on the web needs to be operating at the same level. Hexawattle's connection here is pulsing because its access to the web is more advanced than that of adjacent settlements, and its commandments can theoretically be operating at a higher level than they currently are. But right now it's being held back, so if we upgrade the pylon chain in Skeggy here, we will in due course have access to Strength 4 commandments. Like the other playable races, Lizardmen get four unique rites they can perform. If you wish to awaken a powerful slan to lead one of your armies, then here's how you add him to your recruitment pool. All rights have unlock requirements marked in red here, and timed effect rights have both a duration and a cooldown period. The right of primeval glory here grants all our forces an army ability, enabling them to summon units of feral cold ones directly into the heat of battle for the next 15 turns. Now, army abilities are granted in a whole variety of ways. For example, because Mazda Mundi is currently stationed near Hexwartal, he's granted the Geomantic Nexus ability, enabling him to summon a Skink Priest spellcaster directly into battle. And it's the city itself and his adjacency to it that provides this particular ability. Taking a look at the Lizardmen building browser, you can see a relatively straightforward selection of building chains, granting resource boosts, civic improvements, and recruitment of the various unit types, characters, and monsters in the Lizardmen roster. As a legendary city, Hexwartal has some unique landmark building options too, granting some very powerful bonuses when the settlement reaches level 5. The Lizardmen are also a very enlightened race, so it's no surprise to see an orderly and feature-packed tech tree here, offering improvements to pretty much every aspect of their military and civic matters. The second half and the final tier of this tree are gated behind single techs, which are unlocked by owning specific buildings, which in this particular case we have. The Lizardmen also have access to unique recruitment options called Blessed Spawnings. Blessed units are effectively elite versions of existing units and become available by completing missions which the game will directly issue you. Blessed variants come with improved stats and bonus abilities. You can discern the difference via colouring and other markings. Here are some standard Saurus Warriors and some Blessed Saurus Warriors to their right, who benefit from better stats across the board and the perfect vigour trait so they never run out of puff in battle. The Blessed Carnosaur is a truly nasty piece of work as it moves 25% faster than a regular Carnosaur and gets a whopping 50% magic resistance buff. Up north now and guarding our toehold in Nagaroth is the Saurus Old Blood Aldo Morin and his army. To help him do this we're going to place him in the Astromancy stance. This stance is unique to the Lizardmen and is excellent for defence and surveillance. Alongside granting Vanguard deployment to key units in the army, it brings a massive bonus to campaign line of sight and boosts the army's ambush and underway interception chance. 
So looking at the big picture, we're making okay progress towards ultimate control of the Vortex in this playthrough, though we're lagging a little behind the other races. We're level pegging with Lothurn in terms of how much ritual powering resource we've gathered, though they've just finished their second ritual and we have yet to begin ours. We can also see that Nagarond and Clan Moors already have their second ritual in progress. So we've already captured and conquered the Mirror Pool of Tepok, which is a ritual resource bearing settlement. This provides a turn-by-turn -turn drip feed of ancient plaques, the currency the Lizardmen require to empower their rituals. Now, it's wise to capture such settlements and build up the Trove Chain as soon as you can, as the ritual income this gives you can make a massive difference over the course of your campaign. Another such resource site is located to our south, but it's owned by our friends, the Lizardmen faction of Zlanhuapek. Fortunately, we spent quite a lot of the game buttering them up to the point where they love us to bits and we are just about ready to make an offer of confederacy. Okay, good stuff. We're now another stage along Mazda Mundi's quest chain for his Cobra Mace, which is a superb legendary item that, among other things, grants him poison attacks. So, confederation was successful and our tribes have merged. We've inherited the ritual resource site we wanted, along with all their other holdings. But don't forget that when you confederate, you can inherit certain problems as well. We're nestled up against the Vampire Coast with its ever-present threats of creeping corruption, and just to the south of our new territory is a suspiciously large amount of ruins. Sure enough, Skaven corruption is rife in this area. Plus, given the name of this particular resource site, I think it's safe to assume these ruins are going to be rat-infested undercities. Fortunately, you can use your hero characters to poke their snouts into ruins and check for infestations. Boxar here is one of our skink chiefs and he's out exploring for us, so let's send him in to do some detective work. And sure enough, it turns out that this is Clan Pestilens country. With such a tiny garrison, this settlement is likely quite underdeveloped, but given the mass of ruins to the southwest, it feels like we'll be butting heads with Lord Skrulk and his pox-ridden swarms in due course. All right, time to kick off Ritual 2 and get back in the race for the Vortex. The Ritual panel gives you a heads up as to which three settlements will become entwined with the Vortex for the Ritual's 10 turn duration. In this case, it's Hexoartal and two of our new acquisitions down south. The Ritual is underway, my lord. Even working together, it will take your greatest adept some time to complete. Such is the ritual's power that the Great Vortex itself distorts under its pull. Be wary though, for while the Vortex is weakened, the forces of chaos will slip into this world. Ready your defenses, for they will doubtless be drawn to the ritual's power. Okay, so we've got three chaos armies storming towards our southernmost settlements, and we are militarily weak there. Now this is exactly the kind of pace change that the whole ritual mechanic injects into your campaign. One minute you can be idly considering when you might go to war with some Skaven, the next you've got a considerable force beating down your door, and the clock is ticking. We can also interfere with other races' rituals too by deploying fire and forget intervention armies. Opening the interventions panel here shows us our options, and we can see that the Skaven and Nagarond are both nearing the end of their second rituals. Bigger armies cost more, of course, so let's fire off a desperate intervention against the Skaven. Checking the overview map, we now have a line of sight in Clan Moor's territory where our intervention army has appeared. These armies are AI controlled and they have a single purpose, to conquer and raise the target ritual settlement. And quite the army it is, with lots of high tier units on board. And with luck it'll take out that settlement during the end turn cycle and scupper their ritual. And on that cliffhanger, we'll leave Mazda Mundi to his conundrums. Do follow us on social and keep an eye on our YouTube channel for a close-up look at the Lizardmen in battle coming very soon. Yes.